One of the most important definitions in the canon is where the Buddha defines karma as intention. It's one of the most basic concepts in his teaching, and yet he doesn't explain it much there. To see intention explained, you have to look into the Pinya on the monk's rules. And there you see intention defined basically as meaning to do something. An unintentional act is when you didn't mean to do it, or you meant to do it, but you didn't mean to have certain results come about. Like if somebody's choking, you hit him on the back. You intentionally hit him on the back. But if it turns out you killed him, that wasn't your intention. You wanted to help him. In other cases, you might step on a bug. You didn't mean to step on the bug. It points to the fact that our actions have meaning. We want to accomplish something with it. And so the skill of the karma is based on what we want to accomplish. We want our actions to go someplace, because we're going someplace. As the Buddha pointed out, people are on different paths. They may consciously be on a particular path or not. He said their path's going to hell, their path's going to an animal rebirth, rebirth as a hungry ghost. Most of the people on those paths don't realize that those are the paths they're on. But their actions are taking them someplace. Their paths to the human realm, paths to the heavens, and paths, there's a path to nirvana. The Buddha himself chose that last path. All during his quest for awakening, he was very much somebody going someplace, bodhisattva, being, aiming at awakening. That was what he was. And he did everything in his power to get there, to make sure that his actions led in that direction and had that, res that result. So it's strange that sometimes you hear people saying that Buddhist practice is all about being nobody and going nowhere. I've been receiving a few letters from people who've been taking advantage of the, the quiet time during the pandemic. At least they've been quiet at home, practicing meditation and, and talking about how nice it is to be nobody going nowhere. Well, that's the prerogative of our hands. Don't need, they don't need a sense of self because they've already arrived at happiness. They don't need to be going anywhere because they've already arrived at true happiness. For those of us who haven't arrived, we've got to be somebody going somewhere. The path does have a fruit. And the Dhamma does have an atta, a goal, which means meaning and goal. So you have to look carefully at where your action is taking you. Where are your thoughts taking you? Because your thoughts don't just sit there. They take you in a certain direction. They bend the mind in a certain direction. That was one of the realizations that got the Buddha on the correct path to begin with, or the Bodhisattva at the time. Realizing that his thoughts either led to happiness or led to suffering, led to, led to affliction. And he made up his mind. If a, if a thought was imbued with sensuality or ill will or harmfulness, he would beat it back. Just like a cowherd would beat back the cows that he's responsible for if they start getting into the rice fields. As for thoughts that were imbued with renunciation, non-ill will, i.e. goodwill, harmlessness, he'd allow them to roam free, like the cows in the dry season when there's no rice to wander into and they don't get into trouble. But even then, you'd have to be mindful about where they were. But 
Then he had to develop three qualities to keep him on the path. One was heedfulness, and the realization that your actions really do make a difference, and that includes your thoughts. So you've got to be really careful about what you do. Another one is otapa, which you translate as compunction. These are the qualms you have when you realize you've got an intention that's going to be unskillful, and you just feel that it's wrong. You don't want those results. And there's atapa, ardency. When you do your best to develop what's skillful, let's go, let go of what's unskillful. These qualities work together. We need them in order to practice the precepts and develop the mind and concentration, develop our discernment. Because we have to be conscious that everything we do, even just being in the present moment, keeping your thoughts focused on the present moment, it's going to take you someplace. Your thoughts don't just sit there. They move. They have an arrow. They have a direction. After all, they are fabrications, and fabrications, as the Buddha said, are done for the sake of something. And it's good to be clear about that. When I was in France last time, someone at the retreat complained about practicing the path for the sake of something. He thought we should just be in the present moment for the sake of the present moment. But the present moment doesn't stay still. And if you engage in an action without thinking about its consequences, the Buddha, the Buddha defines that as heedlessness, lack of compunction, lack of ardency. It's definitely not the path. So as you're here, focusing on the present, ask yourself, what is the best use of the present right now? You've got the breath, so you can use it to develop a state, a sense of well-being. What's the purpose of the well-being? Well, the well-being allows the mind to settle down so it can see itself. What's the purpose of seeing itself? Because you can detect any unskillful movements of the mind and hold them in check. As for skillful things, you can give rise to them and maintain them. So there's work to be done. Good work. Work that has a purpose, that has a meaning. And the more you are clear about the fact that you mean certain things in your practice, you intend certain things, then it's easier to judge. Are your actions actually in line with what you intend? Again, think about the Buddha and his quest for awakening. His teachers taught him the dimension of nothingness, the dimension of neither perception nor non-perception. Very refined attainments. But he had a clear idea of where he wanted to go. He wanted the deathless, and he could see that neither of these were deathless. So when he saw that this wasn't what he wanted, he moved on. If he hadn't been clear about his goal, he might have been waylaid. After all, they offered him the position of teacher, but he didn't want to teach unless he had something that was really valuable to teach, something that was outside of the ordinary. So he was clear about his intention. And as a result, he was able to succeed in the path. So he did get to the point where he didn't have to be anybody and didn't have to go anywhere. But you get to that point by being somebody and, and going someplace. So as long as you're on the path, remember, this is a path. It's not a place to lie down. You lie down on the path, and it's like lying down on a road. Who knows who's going to come and run over you? But you 
keep walking. And as long as you're confident that this is the right path and you're heading in the right direction, keep focused on each step to make sure that it stays in the right direction. You've got the breath right here. This is your path. Keep on the path, and it will take you to where you want to go.